It's so good to get back into the Word of God again. It gives me real pleasure to be back before you today, before the cameras. I've been having such wonderful response through the mail, people calling, thanking me for bringing them the Word direct from the Word of God and the Bible. This is the only way that I believe that the gospel today can be preached and be preached in truth. And I believe God's people should know the truth because Jesus himself said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The word, it is spirit and it is truth. Once the word is spoken from the Holy Scripture, it becomes spirit and truth and it goes on throughout eternity. My message today is going to start in St. John 14, verse 1. Now, these are Jesus' own words. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus himself said that. But he said for you to do something. He didn't say he could do it all. He said you had yourself to put forth a little effort. Let not your heart be troubled. He t said for you not to let your heart be troubled. Then he went on to say, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And just before Jesus ascended to go into heaven and stand on his Father's right hand, he said this, My peace I give unto you, my peace I leave with you. He told his disciples and many others that just before he ascended. So he, then he said, here, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And he said, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, he was talking to his disciples here. He was talking to his disciples. He said, where I go, you go. And where I am, there you may be also. In another scripture, he said, it says he ascended above all heavens. Now, that is the power and the might of a promise that God gave to his people. I have accepted that promise to be where Jesus is now throughout eternity. Because he said it, I believe it. And I not only believe it, but I can feel it in my soul. My soul is perfectly at peace. I let nothing trouble me anymore. Nothing troubles me anymore. I still do my natural business and the things that I have to do in this life. But there is no trouble that can trouble me because Christ within me is greater than all day in the world. And that is the point where God has brought me as an individual. This is the place where God wants all of his people to be as individuals. Thomas, in the fifth verse, said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Well, Thomas had stood there and heard Jesus say all these things, but he's like a lot of people that I know out here in the world. He just didn't sink deep enough into his ears for him to understand. But I, as a minister, take my time and will be taking my time so that every one of you can positively understand every one of my words. I don't talk too fast, and I won't talk too slow for you, and I won't give you anything but pure scripture to guide your soul. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now Jesus said that. No man can come unto God the Father, or Jehovah Father, except through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I have looked up those three words, way, truth, and life. And if you want to look them up, get you a good dictionary, like the Webster's, and you will find that nothing can be added to those three words, and absolutely nothing can be taken away. The way, the truth, and the life is the whole matter, as I might say in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. An acorn brings forth a great oak tree. A little acorn no bigger than my thumb will bring forth 
hundreds of tons of oak tree. Yet, before that oak tree grew, it was all stuffed down inside of that little seed, the acorn. And that's just the way it is with Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, all stuffed inside of his holy word here. You can add nothing to him. You can subtract nothing from him. And it's all for you. Let's go on and see what Jesus said here. He said, if ye had known me, you should have known my Father. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Now Jesus made a proclamation there to the world that is one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Let me repeat that. If you had known me, you should have known my Father. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Show us the Father. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? I know what some of you are thinking. He's preaching a denominal doctrine. No, I'm not. I'm preaching right from the word as it is written. I do not have any denominal ties. God has forbidden me to take any denominal ties. He sent me to preach the gospel, not a gospel. And I don't intend to preach a gospel. I intend to preach only the gospel as Jesus Christ quoted it. And as he has given me by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, knowledge and understanding of how to preach it, and to whom to preach it, and when to preach it. I'm son of God. That's why I use strictly scripture for everything that I say. And you people, if you keep watching, keep listening, keep understanding, God will open the scripture to you in a new way that has never been opened to the public before in this generation. And it's time that this generation has the word of God opened unto them. Believe me, dear ones, I'm here just for that purpose. Just to open the gospel to you so that you can dwell with me in eternity as a beautiful glorified body to be with throughout eternity. I would like to be with every one of you throughout eternity. Now let's see how Jesus explained this ninth verse. Jesus said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Now Jesus said three things there. He said, I'm in the Father, the Father is in me, and the works that I do is what he does through me. In other words, Jesus said, I have the Spirit of my Father in me. That makes him and I one. Two personalities, but one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He came in his Father's name. He came in his Father's spirit, and that's it. The word Jesus, or Emmanuel, being interpreted means God with you. And this is what Jesus is trying to get over to his people today. Let me come in in the spirit through the word, and I and my Father will be inside of you. And having known both the Father and the Son, and recognizing him as a spirit, then that spirit is what will take you up in the resurrection in the last day, or take you into glory when you draw, draw your last breath. It's just that simple. Jesus went on to say, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Did you notice how he repeated that? I found myself repeating many times. But Jesus had to repeat, and repeat, and repeat many times, in order to get people to understand his perfect mind. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Believe me for the works that I do. Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus preached three years and six months more or less, and the works that he did, if the books had been written, of everything that he did, it says, I suppose that the world could not contain 
the books. In the first place, it couldn't contain the weight of them, but mainly it couldn't contain the power of the Spirit that would be in those words and in those books. If everything was recorded that Jesus did, this earth could not stand the power of it. It can hardly stand the power of the simple reading of the word right now. You'd be surprised how the devil is rising up and trying to stop these telecasts and the obstacles that he puts in our way, physical, spiritual, and financial. You would be surprised how many fools there is in this world in high places. Now, the word fool means godless one. You would be surprised how many godless people there are in this world that do not even want us to exercise our own constitutional rights in the natural, let alone our spiritual rights in the spiritual. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what comes against the gospel. It came against Jesus. We can expect it to come against us. But I know this, that the one that was in us is greater than all day in the world. I would like to explain this now as I go on. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now there is a statement Jesus made that every professing Christian in the world should practice. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Ask anything in my name, and he said, I'll do it. That's faith. And if you get filled with this word and get that kind of faith, you can ask God for anything you want, and he will do it for you. I don't lack for a thing. I don't lack for a thing, as far as my natural flesh is concerned. I don't have to lack, because God does whatever I ask him. And he said in the next verse, in the 14th verse, he said, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I want to elaborate on that. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Because a spirit-filled Christian is not going to ask Christ for anything amiss. Because the Holy Spirit will not let them, by the wisdom that he gives them through the Spirit, ask for anything to consume it upon their own lust, or ask amiss. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. On the street this morning, a stranger walked up to me and smiled. A man that I had never seen before. And I asked my wife and son, shall we go? And the man, he just started walking with us. I said, why don't you just come and go on home with us? I said, we have a turkey out there. It's Christmas time. Come on and enjoy a holiday season with us. He said, I would like to do that. But he said, you see, I have my family here also. We just moved here, and I knew that I was the first one that had welcomed him to this area. And we had the nicest talk while we were waiting on the lights to change so we could cross the street. And I know that man was a Christian because he had the sweetest spirit. He was friendly. He could smile. And I knew that he was keeping the commandments of the Lord because I could see the love for his neighbor as himself in him, toward me. We need this natural love one for another again. This is the whole gospel, to love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? Everybody. Everyone. The man on the street. The man that lives next door to you. That's right. How nice and how well it would be to see everybody smiling and greeting one another on the streets, whether you know them or not. Why don't some of you try it and see how quick it works? It's written in the word, to be friendly, you must show yourself to be friendly. I think it's time for the Canadians to get friendly one with another and reestablish themselves again, because we've got one of the greatest nations on earth today. We have the greatest nation on earth today. We have a democratic system that works. We have peace. We have the right to minister the gospel. We have the right to acknowledge God as the supreme being. Acknowledge the supremacy of God. Did you know in our Constitution, every man, woman, and child, it says, must acknowledge the supremacy of God to be a Canadian? Our Bill of Rights reads that way, that we acknowledge the supremacy of God. Canadians, let's start right now and start acknowledging the supremacy of God. Start with one another. Start by greeting each other on the street and saying, hello there, how are you? Try it. It really works. Go to your community center, introduce yourself, and say, I'd like to be friends. 
I'd like to make friends with people in this town or in this community. I'd like to help this community to better itself. Jesus did wherever he went, always bettered the community. He always made a better place to live and brought in that love that should be shown one to another as fellow beings before God. God made us all in his image. Now I'm just talking to you out of my heart today. I just feel like I should talk to you this way because I feel that we need it. We need just a good old-fashioned old-time sit down and talk, a friendly talk, maybe over a pot of tea, over some sandwiches, or over a barbecue pit. Wave at your neighbor the next time you see him drive by. Wave at people that you know across the street and say, Hi, how are you? Nobody will think you're crazy. Not if you start the trend and get it going. They'll start saying, Oh, what a sweet town. What a friendly town. What a wonderful people. Really be something, wouldn't it? If we'd get rid of all of our isms and schisms and racist ideas and so on and nationalistic spirits and just become one people before God like our Bill of Rights asks us to do, and our Parliament backs us up to do. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Speaking of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said he would send this comforter to you, so why not just accept it? Why not say, Jesus, I want the comforter? Says the Holy Spirit is given to them that ask him. It's so simple to receive, just ask him. Mm -hmm. He won't turn you down. He said, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I walked the course of this world for 27 years, not knowing God. I went from church to church to church, from church to church to another church to another church, looking for something for my soul from the time I was nine until I was 27. Then one day a minister that had the comforter, that was filled with the Spirit, that was filled with love and that loved my soul, began to quote scripture to me right out of the Bible, and instantly I was saved and converted. A man told me everything that I needed to know within five minutes. A man that happened to be filled with love that God had sent. Today, if any of you people would like to know more about God, you will be welcome to write to me, and I and my staff, as I've said before, will endeavor to answer you quickly and give you scripture for all of your questions and give you answers for everything that you need to know to get your soul filled with the comforter or to bring comfort to your soul. Jesus went on to say, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, period. People, Jesus himself says, I will not leave you comfortless. He wants his people to be happy and to be free in their mind, body, soul, and spirit. I am free today. I'm a free man in the Spirit of the Lord. I am not comfortless. I know that when I draw my last breath, Jesus will be there waiting to escort me up. I have that assurance. He wants you to have this assurance. Because he went on to say in the 19th verse, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. Christ is alive, and he does live today. And he lives for you. It says, At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He combined three personalities together there with that verse. I am in the Father, he and the Father together, and you and me, you and Christ together, and I and you. All three together. The Father and the Son in you. Three separate personalities combined by one spirit in your mortal flesh to instruct you how to do the works of God and live before him clean and holy. In one place he said, Behold, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I believe that Christians are a perfection of God. That perfection is for his people today, because it is in the Bible. On one of my next telecasts, I will be 
ministering on perfection. It is one of God's blessings that he gives his people today. He said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest or show myself unto him. Now there is a promise that Christ cannot keep from fulfilling. Jesus Christ has appeared to me. I know his voice. Because he said, I'll show myself to you. I have seen Christ. I have seen a vision of him. I know that he is alive today. I know that he is for you. I know the same things that he has shown me is for you at this time. Just believe the word of God. Get your faith up where Christ can use you and then receive all the good things he's got for you. I feel that in this day and age, that simplicity is the key to every man, woman, and child's salvation. Because Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He didn't say it was going to take you a month or a year or ten years to get it, but he said, I will give you rest now. Right now is the day for you to enter into your rest. There is a message on entering into the rest of God. It says there is a rest unto the people of God. And ladies and gentlemen, we're in that day that Jesus offers this perfect peace and rest. So let not your heart be troubled. You stop your heart from being troubled. He said, let not your heart. Don't you let it be troubled. Don't let anything trouble you anymore. If something does trouble you a little bit, just look up and say, now Jesus, here am I. You said you'd give me your peace. You said you would leave your peace with me. I accept that, and I accept the perfect peace right now that you so faithfully died to send me through the Comforter and through the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for listening today. God bless you is my prayer for you. I love you very much, and God bless you again. Amen. Righteousness tends to belong So keep your love